I met Gideon Mehring, a former apartheid-era military officer who now heads a union of local white farmers and runs what he calls Town Watch. Hello there. Sir Fars. He's Hello. Kind of, uh, <laughs> Simon, he's Town Watch. He's also involved with our training. Um, Town Watch. Yeah. Right. Litrichard Town Watch, for example. Previously, uh, there was a hell of a lot of crime in Litrichard, and after the involvement, uh, it's down by about 95%. So you run, you run, you run to the security patrols, do you? Yeah. Yes. Well, this is quite. That is a typical battle battle jacket. A battle jacket. Yeah. Can I take it off? Yeah, you can. So this is what your is this what your guys wear? Yes, hundred percent. This is on a lady at the moment. Yeah, it's It'll probably fit on me. I'm a slender thing. <laughs> oh, I feel a bit. I feel a bit more macho in this. <laughs> I feel a bit Rambo. <laughs> what is that? That's a. Is this a stun gun? Yeah. We don't need to see it tested. Well, we could try. Gideon could probably take, Please the, not. take the shot. Whoa! It's quite serious, there. We're not allowed to have the While there is undoubtedly a huge crime problem in South Africa, I began to suspect that Gideon's concerns run a little deeper. The boer is ice here on the blade. The boers are here to stay. Okay. You're going to do some shooting. Gideon took us to the outskirts of town. He wanted to show us how prepared he and his people are for any eventuality. I say. Oof. OK, they're dead. They're really dead now. When do you need, or why do you need to have an AK-47? Uh, when would you need it? If you talk about the courses, we train the people to handle an AK-47 because the people who um, attack farmers on their farms uh, from time to time make use of AK-47s, R4, automatic rifles, uh, shotguns or whatever. You basically want to have a bigger gun? You must be in a position to handle that weapon mm. and to return fire accurately. OK, so some more bullets have come. Good. It might surprise you. Okay, I'm going to... Hold it steady. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> hell. Hold it in. Thank you. Okay, hang on. Mind the dog. Come out of the way, dog. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, what's a little bit worrying is, for me, is how... You do get a... I get a rush from it. Mm -hmm. And I feel, it, make, it does make me feel powerful, yeah, actually. And, and that's the Briefly problem. powerful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I just shot an, an AK-47. Would you ever have had to have your sort of self-defense organization in the old days before the end of apartheid? Would you ever have needed to do it then? I think it's a bit more dangerous now because at that stage we, are, we have had everything behind us, the laws, uh, the money, everything, the organizations. But today we are on ourselves. Um, Fueling the insecurities of people like Gideon is what's happened in neighboring Zimbabwe where many white farmers have had their lands forcibly seized by the government. What's the likelihood or what's the, what are the chances that the government here might try to do to the white farmers here what the government in Zimbabwe has tried to do over the border? <clears throat> is, it something that, is that something that worries you? Yeah, definitely, because there's always the possibility. We look into uh, situations like that and we must be in a position to, uh, to handle it. 